All right, let's take a look at question 15. In question 15, we're going to be assessed on how to solve rational equations. Okay, all right. So um, the question reads, what is the solution set of the equation 2 over 3x plus 1 equals 1 over x minus 6x over 3x minus 1? Now, a tip to keep in mind concerning solving um, rational equations, very, very helpful tip is the first step which um, makes it really easy all right so the first step is to uh, eliminate the denominator by multiplying by the LCD okay start by eliminating the denominator or denominators all of them you want them all gone okay denominators by multiplying by the LCD. That then simplifies the problem considerably. All right, so to illustrate, check this out. We have 2 over 3x plus 1 equals 1 over x minus 6 over 3x plus 1. So the goal is to eliminate the denominators 3x plus 1, x, and 3x plus 1. To accomplish that, we have to find the LCD of the denominator. So the LCD of 3x plus 1 and x is the um, binomial expression that uh, these two can go into evenly. So since there are no common factors, it's simply going to be x times 3x plus 1. Okay? All right. If you do not know what the um, LCD is, just simply take all the denominator factors, put them next to each other, and multiply. You will see. It's going to be a little bit longer but you will get the same answer all right so to eliminate the denominator what I'm going to do is multiply every single term by the LCD so let me rewrite this again 3x plus 1 so that you can see exactly what's happening all right so multiplying by the LCD the first one we're going to multiply by x times 3x plus 1 and then the next one, x times 3x plus 1. And then the next one times x times 3x plus 1. All right, and then let's simplify. Check this out. This is really cool. Now, the first term, the 3x plus 1 and the 3x plus 1 divide out. That denominator is gone. And then here, the x and the x divide out. And then here, 3x and 3x divide out. This shouldn't surprise you. This is what the LCD is all about. It's a common divisor okay all of them can go into the LCD that's why we chose to multiply by the LCD so they all go away all right and we are left with 2x minus uh, sorry equals 3x plus 1 oh snap we have a minus here so what does that mean because of the presence of this minus we want to proceed with caution all right, so we just multiply this minus and then the x right here. So we have, okay, just a, just a small correction here. There is an x in the problem. So there's a 6x right here. So let's bring it down. Okay, so there's an x. All right, so when we multiply them together, 6x times x is going to be negative 6x squared. All right, so now if you take a look at what we have, the problem that we have compared to the original, this looks much nicer, right? This is just a quadratic trinomial equation when placed in standard form, and this is a complicated rational equation. So what we're going to do is place it in standard form, uh, turns in descending order of degrees equal to zero. All righty, so we'll add 6x squared to both sides, so we have 6x squared and then plus 2x, subtract 3x from both sides, and then subtract 1 from both sides, set it equal to 0. Which I'll go here to place it in standard form, all right? So these two terms are like terms, so we are going to combine it. And then we have 6x squared minus x minus 1 equals 0. And then we're going to solve this by grouping, all right? So let's go ahead and play the x game here. So AC... Um, um, let me see. We have A, B, C. A is 6. 
B is negative 1 and C is negative 1. So AC goes on top. AC is negative 6 and B is negative 1. So what two numbers multiply to give you negative 6 and add to give you negative 1? So negative 3 and 2. Okay? Alrighty. So let's put it in and finish this off by factoring by grouping. So we have, what do we have? We have 6x squared. Take out the middle term and replace it with negative 3x plus 2x. These are the two values we got from the x game. Okay, put in the center, minus 1, equals 0. And then break it down the center, and we're going to factor by grouping. All right? Okay, from the first two, the GCF is, the greatest common factor is 6 and 3, 3. x squared and x to the first power is x, so factor that out. So what are we left with? 3x squared, if you divide this by 3x squared, by 3x, you have 2x minus 1. Bring down the plus, nothing goes into these two, so just pull out 1, and you have 2x minus 1. Pause and check to make sure you're doing it correctly, and that's the case here. These two quantities are identical, so that means we're looking good. Alright, so let's factor out the identical quantities, which is 2x minus 1 and 2x minus 1. Factor that out, and then you have 2x minus 1. And what's left out is the um, coefficients of that quantity 2x minus 1. Those two are grouped together in their own nice little parentheses. All right, so to finish this off, we're going to use the zero product property, or the ZPP. All right, 2x minus 1 equals 0, sent both factors to 0, and then you solve. For the first one, you can add 1 to both sides. You have 2x equals 1, divide by 2. And then you have x equals 1 half as the first solution. And then this one, subtract 1. You have 3x equals negative 1, divide by 3. And you have x equals negative 1 third. All right, so our solutions for this problem are what? What are our solutions? Our solutions in set roster notation. <clears throat> are uh, one half and negative one third, right? Wrong. Now, whenever you're solving, um, rational equations like this, because we multiplied by the LCD, we might have introduced extraneous solutions. So in order to make sure that we do not create any extraneous solutions, we have to look at our restrictions on the x value. So the restrictions on the x value just involve setting the denominator equal to zero, the LCD equal to zero, and making sure that we did not come up with any of these answers. So there are restrictions. These restrictions ensure that our denominator does not attain a zero value, which results in the equation being undefined. All right, so we had x times 3, x plus 1. So you just set both denominator factors to zero. So x cannot be zero and 3x, okay, x cannot be zero and 3x plus 1 cannot be 0 also. If 3x plus 1 cannot be 0, that automatically tells us that, subtract 1 from both sides, 3x equals negative 1, divide by 3, that tells us that x cannot be negative 1 third. Uh-oh, we have a problem, ladies and gentlemen. This answer, negative 1 third, is extraneous. All right? So even though it shows up in the solution set, it does not satisfy the restrictions. So the actual solution to this problem is just one half, and that's it. All right. So the answer to question number fifth, oopsie, to question fifteen is option number three. All right. So this is basically how you solve rational equations.
Thanks so much for taking the time to watch this presentation. Let us know what you think. If you found the contents of this tutorial helpful in your preparation for the upcoming Regents exam, do give us a thumbs up. Your positive feedback is very valuable to us. If you have any questions or requests, just post it in the comment section below and we'll be more than glad to assist. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel for updates to the remainder of this review series. More support resources can be found at mathgoodserve.com under New York Regents. Thanks again for watching and have a wonderful day. Goodbye.